Stand here as the Lord is blessing his word, bringing his word to us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne we raise a sound we raise for he to appreciate God for the privilege he has given to me to be a blessing to the body of Christ and I'm glad I appreciate God greatly for making the way a blessing the brethren here in this chapel. I'd like to sincerely appreciate Pastor Jewel and the wife, to Grace. Um, thank you. Like he said, we've been in together for a while. We've been doing some good jobs by the grace of God for the kingdom. And um, they've been with us for some time. I, I feel at home here. Truly speaking, I feel at home. And the reason is very, very simple. Your former chaplain, Dr. Ezekiel Hamnyo, has been also a blessing to us. I, I, he has ministered in our church and um, he was the one that actually ministered during my 50th birthday last year. And Pastor Joy were there. And, and um, the message is he preached. I can't forget that message. One of the things he said is that people celebrate, you know, when they are, when they are a year older, they say, oh God, thank you for adding another year to my, to my, to my, to my years on earth. But he did say, actually, it is a subtraction. When you are saying God has added, added another year to my life, the truth is God has actually reduced one year from your lifespan on earth. So it was a wake-up call to think 
to reason. Amen. Is it Pastor Mrs. or Evangelist Mrs. Imoko? She has also ministered in our church. I'm telling you the reason why I feel at home. Somebody say amen. amen. And um, many of them. Praise the Lord. So I appreciate the leadership of the church for the approval, the privilege for me to stand here and then to be a blessing to the body of Christ. I do not take that privilege for granted. I'm trusting the Lord that the Lord will speak to us this morning. Even as we build on what we started on Wednesday. The focus of this youth program is using your gifts and talent for kingdom service. Using your gifts and talent. Gifts and talents for kingdom service. I'd like us to pray for 30 seconds, maybe, asking the Lord, Father, you have something for me this morning, please release it. Is it a prayer to pray? Now, this is a prayer point. Lord, please release to me what you have for me today. Is it a good prayer to pray? Please, can you pray that prayer? Father, release into my heart what you have for me in the service this morning. Let me not miss that revelation. Help me not to miss that insight, the light that I need. Jesus speaking in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 63 says the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Lord, please, the life that I need, give it to me through your word. Please pray that prayer very quickly. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Can I hear that amen well? Amen. So this morning, we are building on what we started, using your gifts and talents for kingdom service. This is very simple. It means that every gift, every talent we have has a purpose. It has a purpose. And in the course of my teaching on Wednesday, God helped us to understand that we're able to understand the meaning of gifts and the meaning of talent. Well, I use those two words. You know, um, I use them together. Interwovenly. And they have slight difference. There is a slight difference between gift and talent. So we saw all that. Somebody say amen. amen. For the purpose of those who were not here, I can see we have a larger house today. What are gifts? But before we get into that, please let's take a scripture very quickly. Let's read from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. So we can build the teaching based on God's word. Ephesians chapter 4. We shall begin to read from verse number 5. Ephesians chapter 4. We shall read from verse 5 to verse number 8. Now I will read from the New Living Translation. I don't know if you have that translation on in your system, the New Living Translation. But let me read from what I have here. There is only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, 
And there is only one God and Father who is over us all and in us all and living through us all. Verse 7. However, he has given each one of us a special gift according to the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Somebody say amen. amen. So, God is the giver of gifts and talent. Now, we saw the slight difference between gifts and talent on Wednesday. And what is it? Christians, people, when they are born again, when we are born again, we receive gifts from God. And then talent, it means that gifts are received from God. But talent could be inherited. Talent could be, you know, naturally received. Now, there is a, why I say there is a slight difference is just the, maybe terminology or the usage. But looking at it critically, whether it is a talent or it is a gift, God is in charge of them all. Because God gives life. He created us. He brought us to this world. And if you came into this world with a talent, then God permitted you to have that talent. Somebody say Amen. Now, another difference between gifts and talent is that a, 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 a gifted man, a gifted man, a gifted person can also operate with talent. He can also use his talent. But a talented person does not have the capacity to use a gift because he doesn't have it. Are we together here? Ah, are you confused? You will understand, so move on. Gifts are given to Christians. Talents are inherited naturally. And that is why you could find a person who is not born again, he has the, the talent of singing, he could sing anything. Fela does not need gifts to sing. Who is hearing me here? He doesn't need God. Special gift coming on him to sing. He can't come to church and sing. He can sing worldly music, but he can't sing in church. Because God has not given him the gift that will benefit the body of Christ. Somebody hearing me now. Is it getting a little bit clearer? Let's move on from there. So God is the giver of the gifts. And he has given us those gifts or talents for a purpose. We saw that it is for the purpose of kingdom profit and the profit of humanity. So if you are a child of God, you are a Christian, and God has given to you gifts or talents, and your gifts or talents are not beneficial or profitable to the kingdom or to humanity, then you have no business having those gifts. We read in the book of Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 to verse 30 where we saw that, you know, Jesus telling us a parable about a man who gave gifts five to one, two to another, and then one to one. And the Bible says that he gave those gifts according to their several ability. And we saw at the end of the day what happens with those gifts. Or what happened. What the receivers of those gifts did with the gifts. We understood several things about 
gifts and talents, we saw that it is God that gives number one. And then number two, we also saw that we need to understand that God gives gifts to us according to our strengths and graces. That is why no one is expected to envy anybody. Don't envy people. Just appreciate your gifts. God does not give us his gifts equally. He gives to us according to our several ability. Somebody say amen. We also saw that everyone came into this world with at least a gift. And at least a talent. So you have something. We came to also discover that our, our, our gifts and talents are for the profits of the kingdom. Somebody say amen. amen. Your gifts, if not used, and if not properly utilized, it has eternal consequences. In fact, it has consequences in time and in eternity. That is, in this world, there is a consequence for not using your gifts or for misusing your gifts. Hallelujah. Now, for want of time, I will want us to, of course, we saw what it takes, how to discover your gift. That is why sometimes when you miss church, you miss many things. I'm just, you know, flashing over this because of many of you who were not here. Because somebody will ask, how do I identify my gift? What has God given to me? There are questions to ask, to be able, there are things to do, there are moves to make to be able to identify your gift. We saw all that on Wednesday. But please, this morning, for want of time, I'd like us to go straight to what I have. And what I have this morning is the dangers to avoid when gifts are identified. Write it down. Write it down. The dangers to avoid when gifts are identified. Why is this very important? It is very important because people have fizzled out. Men have wasted away. Destinies are aborted because of the dangers we see. People have fallen victim of several dangers. And for that reason, they couldn't fulfill destiny and purpose. God has a plan for everyone. I listened to our sister who was doing the presentation on, is it dressing or something? And she prayed a prayer. I said, may your, may, your, may your dress not make somebody to fall, right? And then at the end, she said, it is not a prayer, it's a responsibility. That means that you, you, you have something to do, you have a role to play. Life is full of principles. And if you break those principles, certainly you can't achieve your aim in life. You can't achieve your goal in life. You can't fulfill destiny in life. The plan of God for your life will be aborted if principles are broken. Who heard that? So what are the dangers to avoid? When gifts are identified. Please, young men, listen to me carefully. The plan of God for you and for me is to be greater than your fathers. You didn't hear me. God expects you as a young person to be greater, be bigger, do more exploits than your fathers and your leaders. And so you can't afford to live carelessly. You can't afford to just allow yourself to be exposed to the dangers of society, dangers everywhere, and then waste your life and destiny and potentials. Many somebody sang a song. That is my friend uh, Apostle Goshidoroko. He sang a song and he said that the, the richest place on planet Earth is not the bank, it is the grief, because many potentials have been buried there. I pray for you. May you fulfill destiny. Amen. May you fulfill purpose. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So danger number one to avoid 
is what I call the danger of thoughtlessness. The danger of thoughtlessness. Don't make moves, child of God. If you want to fulfill purpose, fulfill destiny, make use of God's grace in your life, God's potentials in your life, God's gift in your life to be. In fact, if your gift, your potential will be beneficial to you, you must escape the danger of, of thoughtlessness. You must be thoughtful and be a very thoughtful person. Don't move without thinking. Don't act carelessly and don't speak without reasoning. We have people who act without thinking. People who talk without reasoning. People who move without considering the consequences of their movement. And they die before their time. The book of Luke chapter 12 and verse, and verse 20. Luke chapter 12 and verse 20. Tells us a story of a man who labored for years and gathered wealth. But in one night, in one night, he lost everything he gathered. He had labored for. Why? Because he was a very bad thinker. He was thoughtless, careless. He said, but God said unto him, concerning the rich man, this guy got that word by reason of divine help, by reason of divine provision. He was so rich that he had no space. His bands became too full to the point that he couldn't have anywhere to keep those things anymore. And he said to himself, what will I do now? I will break my bands, build another one, put my goose inside, and then I will sit down to eat and enjoy. Excuse me, life is not about you. It's about your creator. You didn't hear me. Life is not about you, it's not about you, it's not about the flesh, it's not about your personality, it is about your maker, your creator. And so, you came into this world for the fulfillment of destiny, the fulfillment of the purpose of God for your life. Don't be careless in your thoughts. Don't be careless in your moves. The Bible is speaking in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Media, I beg you to be very fast, please, because we have no time. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 24 to 26. The Bible says, it says, put away forward mouth. Today, young men can talk a lot. And you know, in the multitude of words, sin can never be lacking. You can't please God if you are a talkative. Your mouth is your mouth runs like basket. You won't hear God when He speaks. Hmm. He says, "Let thy eyes look right on, and let thy eyelids look straight before thee." Next verse. He said, "Ponder the path of thy feet." Ponder the path of thy feet. Excuse me. Even if you have a gift, you have a potential. Before you move, think. Before you act, think. Before you start telling people you are the greatest of all on earth, think. One thing you must know, whatever you know, there is somebody who knows better than you. And I'd like you to know that what you are celebrating today or what you are praying for in the future is somebody's yesterday. So you must be aware that before you take a step, you ponder the path of your feet. Think. It says, and let all thy ways be established. Next verse. All right, let's stop there. Somebody say amen. The danger of thoughtlessness. You that your mouth runs like water. 
and you tell everybody you are the best. In fact, I was saying on Wednesday, there are people who come to church. All they do is they come to analyze the message. Tell, analyze how somebody speaks, what somebody does, what people are doing. And they tell their friends, you see, I can do more than what he or she is doing. It is a waste of time and destiny. Waste of purpose. Don't be a victim of thoughtlessness. Please, I beg you, be a very good thinker, a very good, thoughtful person. And in the midst of thoughtfulness, as you seek to think, God gives you a revelation. There is a visitation in the place of thoughtfulness. I don't know if somebody is getting blessed here. Number two, avoid looking down on yourself. Number two, danger to avoid. Avoid looking down on yourself. Paul speaking in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Child of God, don't look down on yourself and don't be afraid. Your gift determines your rise. And your gift equally determines your flight. If you will rise in life, God has given you a gift that will lift you. If you will fly above your equals, not for a show, but for the glory of God, then your gift must be considered. You've got something in you that God has given to you for the purpose of your rising. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be scared. And you do not need to be intimidated by what you see around you, what you see on social media. Do you know people fake many things on social media today? Let me tell you. What you see on social media are not realities. Most of them are not realities. Do I have a witness in the house? There is this lady who went to who went to a Photoshop, a studio, photo studio, and then she went with a bag. Got into the studio, pulled what she was wearing, did her makeup and make down, did all the things, and then put all the vulture, whatever you know. This thing, this this thing, ladies put now. Is it eyelashes you call it? Huh? You just put that, that thing that looks like witches and wizards or uh, whatever. <laughs> no, so when they, are, when they are talking to you, they're going to... <laughs> so she did all that and then took several snapshots in the studio, pulled the clothes, went out. People of God, let nothing in this world move you and make you think somebody is better than you. God gave us gifts uniquely to do unique things. And if you must be unique, you must not be a carbon copy. If you copy people, your originality will never come out. Like our sister who taught us on the issue of dressing. Today, people, people, people change their look. It is when they get to their houses, their homes. You see, in fact, if you want to know the reality of a lady, visit her in the morning. Early in the morning, visit their house. Don't check them in the daytime. Or in the, because before that time, they would have done all the additions and whatever. They add everything. Add hair. Sorry, I'm not against it. Add hair. Add what? Add this and that. In fact, they even add bum bum. That is the truth. It is in the market, sir. There is extra bomb bomb, extra botox in the market. And that is why on, on social media you see somebody holding holding phone. Alright? They are doing selfie. They do like this. They are trying to show you your, the size of meet them in the morning. It is flat. It is flat. 
They had everything. You want people want to be tall like others. Excuse me, celebrate your height. I like you to know that God has a reason for making you the way you are. Do I have anybody who appreciates his height? If you are, if you are not, if you, no, wait, wait, I want to call you out. I want to call you out. You know you are not tall and you appreciate the way your height is. Come. Please come quickly. You are not tall. Come. All right. I just need one person. I just need one person. Thank you very much, sir. Stand here. Thank you, sir. Please, can I have, can I have a tall person here? You appreciate your height. You are tall. Just come. A man, come. Sorry, this guy is taller than you. Come. I'm trying to let you understand the reason why you must not be afraid. You must not be. See, there is an, there is an, there is an advantage in everything God gives to you. This guy is taller than this guy, right? Do you realize that the advantage of this Permit me to call you short guy. You are not short. The advantage of this height, if both of them are to begin fighting now, who is closer to the to, to the to the uh, to the feet? He doesn't need stress to bend down and pack this guy's foot. Height and his stature, and then he is afraid. Meanwhile, God has given you gifts. That will help you bring down every Goliath in your life. Oh, yes. David didn't need to be as tall as Goliath. All he needed was to understand whom he was. Who had me here? He knew his capacity, his capability, his level, and his. He knew what he had on the inside. Greater is he that is in me than that devil in the world. Thank you. So the Bible is speaking in 2 Timothy chapter 1 of verse 7. It says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I'd like you to know the young and the old listening to me. God has given you something that has capacity to establish the glory of God in your vicinity. To make impact in your time. So avoid the danger of looking down on yourself. Number three. Are you writing? I appreciate people who write a lot. Avoid the danger of hastiness. The danger of being in a hurry. Being in a hurry is a factor that will limit you. It's a factor that will kill you before your time. It's a factor that will silence your voice. Before your actual manifestation time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1. It says that there is time for everything. There is a season for everything. Don't come and tell your pastor. Pastor. I just discovered that. I've been gifted with the, the gift of uh, prophecy. In fact. The way I see some people in this church, they, they are possessed. There are many possessed persons in this church. So, that gift that God has given, I want to use it to deliver many people here. Excuse me. Calm down. Calm down. There is always a platform. If you can be patient. Don't tell your leaders you know more than them. Calm down. I have discovered something in life. I have discovered that the, the old want to be young. 
And the young want to be old. Quickly, in a hurry. That is why you find young people, 18 years. My, my first son is, is 22 years now. And then, 22-year-old boy, is the beard here is plenty. You know, just left the thing like that is plenty. And I say, Joel, incidentally, it's your name's sake. I say, Joel, calm down. What is happening? Please, can you? He said, oh, Daddy, uh, Daddy, you know this thing. Daddy, just, just, you won't understand. I won't understand. No problem. <laughs> That is always the case. They will tell you, you won't understand. So I just let him be. I allowed him. But there is one truth I want to help you understand today. I want to let you know. That, you see, the difference between the old and the young is that the old has been a young person before. But the young person has never been an old man. So no matter what you think you know, there is something that the old man has experienced that you have never experienced. So calm down. When your time comes, we will know whether you will be able to do it or not. Somebody say amen. The danger of hastiness so Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 20. Proverbs 28 and verse 20. The Bible says, He that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. You make haste to be rich, you can't be innocent. You must be a victim. You must be a candidate of investigation. Who is hearing me here? He that maketh haste to be rich. He says, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Just be faithful with that which you have. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Something very interesting is written in verse 22. Place it quickly. Verse 22. The Bible says, he that hasted to be rich had an evil eye. an evil eye and consider it not that poverty shall come upon him excuse me if you are in a hurry to get anywhere thinking you have enough talent or potential to achieve anything in this life the truth is your eyes will become evil and you wouldn't mind whatever comes your way you wouldn't mind Any opportunity, whether it is correct or it is wrong or it is right, whether it is right or wrong, any opportunity that comes your way, you want to take advantage of that opportunity to make money. So you make haste to manifest. You'll be a victim. I want to plead with you in addition to these 10 minutes. All right? He said I should round up in 10 minutes' time. How many hours did you take singing and praising here? Answer me, church. Pastor Joel, I plead for additional 10 minutes to this. So change it to 20 minutes and return it to me. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Don't be in a hurry move anywhere now the bible says something very important in the book of first kings chapter 19 and verse 19 first Kings chapter 19 and verse 19 the bible says that elijah found elisha and he cast his garment on him his mantle on him and i call that mantle the mantle of followership i call that mantle the mantle of followership now listen Mantle dropped on Elisha two times. Listen carefully. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing. He was in a farm with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon Elisha. The Bible says that Elisha right from there, began to follow Elijah. And he followed him for many years. 
between the time that that this mantle was cast upon Elijah and the time that Elijah was lifted up was a long time. Elisha didn't do anything ministry. He didn't do anything parting, maybe dividing the Jordan River. He didn't try to prove to anybody, I carry a mantle. It was a mantle of followership. A mantle of learning. So he kept following, kept following, kept following until the day that it was time for the release of mantle for ministry. And he grabbed it. Can you come down for a while? God is actually raising people and especially young men to deal with the head of the devil in this generation. But child of God, you must not be in a hurry to make any impact and to prove any point. Trying to prove a point will useless you zero you for nothing. Elisha followed. And I beg somebody who is hearing me today, please calm down. You know you can sing. Calm down. You can sing. Don't prophesy. You can teach. Don't, don't prophesy. You can preach. Don't bother going for deliverance services. Oh, can I see deliverance services? It is not your calling. It's not your gift. And I like you to know, child of God, that every talent you have in terms of intelligence and creativity, in terms of dealing with software, computers, and the rest of them, child of God, whichever area God has gifted you, it is for the purpose of the advancement of the kingdom. Speaking with a doctor a few days ago, and then he said to me that his son is in Air Force Institute of Technology, where my second son is. Kaduna. And then he said that his son is a 300 level student right now. But the guy is so good, talented in computer, you know, software development and things like that. And that even as a 300 level student, he's working with a company that pays him 4 million. 4 million naira. That is about $5,000. They're about $5,000. The guy is a student, and the one that amazed me the most, he said that his son is the one paying his school fees. He is doing PhD right now. Talent. Let me ask you a question. You are talented in computer. What are you using it for? Are you not a Yahoo person? Are you not scamming people? Man of God, do you know, I've realized that these scammers, Yahoo guys, even in church, they are doing it. While message is going on, they are, they are attending to their clients. Dealing with some clients somewhere. Somebody hearing me now. And I was shocked. I thought that this thing, this thing is being done by maybe big boys of, you know, 20 something years and all that. We were in our home church. Some time ago, my son is here. He was the one I asked to teach that lesson in that home church. And children of 14, 16 were telling me the stories of how they do this Yahoo business. Parents, you need to be very careful what your, what your children are doing. And they said to me, sir, that what happens is, he said, one of the girls says that, that for example, she could, you know, just arrange with a guy. And then two of them are in the Yahoo business. And they are in touch with a white man in China, for example. And they are talking. So the, the girl will not be playing her part. Maybe strip naked. And then the guy is doing the videoing and something and connecting. And the idiot, the stupid Chinese man, is enjoying the whatever over there and is sending them dollars. It goes beyond that anyway. But I'd like you to know, child of God, if your intelligence, your talent, your gift is in that 
area God is expecting you to use that word. You know the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The word of technology, the word of science, the word of engineering, the word of medicine. Go in there and preach the gospel. And if God has endowed you with such a talent, the talent must be for the advancement of the gospel. Who heard me? I don't know what you'll do on campus. But if you are one of those who take advantage of weaklings and take advantage of, of ignorant people to cheat on them, rubbish them, mess up with them, please be very careful. Today is a day of repentance. Repent before the judgment of God comes upon you. Your gift is not to kill anybody. You know, there are people who come to church they are not Christians. A cultist. Two of my sons are here. We had a youth program where we invited some cultists, some ex-cultists to come. Guys who have been in court before. Come share with us your experience. And they were talking. And one of these guys said that while he was there, what they were doing was that they would come, when, anytime they need clean gears, they come to church. Yes. Anytime they need clean gears, they come to church. And they enter church and then look for those who are firebrand, those who are talented, and they pretend to be Christians. They deceive them and draw them close. Maybe they'll say, oh, Can we join you in evangelism? Like that. And then that is how they woo them, walk on them before you know they finish rubbish them. Life story, true life story. I don't know what you do on campus. I don't know what you do in this church. I don't know why you are here thinking you have a gift. And the gift is to bring down the soul of somebody. Please, I beg you, repent. Repent. There are people who wouldn't want to go to the kingdom. They don't want to go and they don't want others to go. They stand at the gate. You are coming in. They say, no, 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 no. You don't need to come in here. There is this one that that touched, touched me the most. The guy said, he tried many times to repent. Many times to repent. The first time he tried, a pastor disappointed him. Because he just told the pastor that they were standing and he said, sir, I am a courtist. I've been thinking of what to do. And while they were standing talking, another pastor was passing and this pastor said, pastor, come, 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 come. This guy said he's a courtist. He just exposed him immediately. And this guy said, Kai, is that how they expose people in church? I won't repent anymore. He moved away. The next time he entered church was that he entered the church and then discovered that some guys who were like him were in the same church carrying microphone. They were in the same church doing one thing or the other. So he said, ah, so if my likes are here, then what is the need? Please, I beg you, if you are a child of God and God has given you talent, don't bring down anybody. Somebody say amen. amen. Is God speaking to somebody here? All right, let's fly. Number four, it is called the danger of pride. The danger of pride. Avoid the danger of pride. The Bible says in Proverbs 16 verse 18, it says pride go ahead before, before destruction and a haughty spirit before you fall. James chapter 4 and verse 6 the Bible says, it says, but he gave grace to the humble alright, wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud he resists the proud he resists the proud he resists the proud and he gives grace, he said, but he gives grace to the humble if God is resisting you, how far can you go with your talent you can't go anywhere can't go anywhere. Can't go anywhere. Can't go anywhere. To avoid ending before your time. Please kill that spirit of pride. Arrest it forever. Submit yourself to authority. And let God be you. Let there be that spirit of humility on your inside. Number five. Avoid the danger of pleasure. The danger of pleasure. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. Listen to me, child of God. If you know who you are and if you know what you carry, 
You won't eat what others eat. You won't go where others go. You will watch what you eat. You will watch what you drink. You will also watch where you go and what you do. Somebody hearing me here. The Bible says we are a royal priesthood, a choosing generation. Do you realize that there are people who take Indian hemp to charge, to get them charged on Sunday morning? I'm not telling you what, I'm not just, I'm not just exaggerating. A young man came all the way from Motuko, met me and said, sir, how do I come out of this? He said, our pastor, of course, he was one of the workers around the pastor. You see, our pastor, each time, before he gets on pulpit on Sunday morning, not just on every service, he will first and foremost take Igbo. Yes, he will take India hemp. He will smoke it very well. And he has introduced them to it. So they too have to take it so that they will not, no matter what they do, they will not sweat. They won't be tired. And he said to me, I don't know what to do. I'm tired of this. I want to get out of this, of, of it. There are young people today, they have no money to go buy a cigarette or buy something to charge themselves. The next place you find them is the vent of a soccer way. The vent of a soccer way. How many of you have soccer way in your house? Toilet soccer way. That is where they will go. They will just get to that vent and then just sniff the odor that comes from the soccer way to get them charged. Excuse me, don't use less your life. Don't kill yourself before time. You take ganja, you take Igbo, you take Indian hemp. I don't know what they call it. You take tramadol. Your gift is dying. Somebody say amen. Your gift is, is dying. And I pray for somebody, if you are here today and you are addicted to such act, the Lord will deliver you today. You are the one I'm praying for. Let that amen sound like thunder. God shall deliver young people today in the name of Jesus. The danger of pleasure. Go to our streets. You find, you find, you find clubs everywhere. Beer palace everywhere. 2 a.m. They are dancing naked. And then stupid people. Elders, mature people go and sit down and be watching how small, small girls are. Just dancing and doing, no, they are doing all that. Amen. Let me rush quickly. Also, avoid that is number six now. Avoid the danger of deception from the opposite sex in the church. All right. Avoid the danger of deception from opposite sex. They were in church. When a young man, he's doing his master's currently, he has done it, he's just waiting for, he's working on his thesis or something. He came and told us how a lady deceived him. Had approached him. It, it, it got me surprised that ladies can also approach boys. Somehow I was surprised, but I remembered what happened to me back then many years ago in the 80s while in school. When a lady threw something at me, I rushed Rush, rush to her to pay her back and then she entered into an uncompleted building when she got into that building she said oh, John, 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 calm down, calm down just want to tell you that I love you and then this young man said that one day he wasn't comfortable with the relationship meanwhile this was a church girl himself was in church and then they met somewhere and the girl said, I want to surprise you. He said, eh, you want to surprise me? Say yes, close your eyes. The girl told the, the brother, close your eyes. The brother said, why? What, 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 what is the meaning? Okay, I will. And he closed his eyes. And as soon as he closed his eyes, the surprise gift was a kiss. The girl went straight to him and then kissed him. He tried to resist, but it was too late. Oh, no, no, I don't know. Why is this a surprise? And that was how they continued from there until they entered into the act. 
They did it. People of God, even in church, there are agents of darkness to kill your gifts. To ensure that you do not fulfill destiny and purpose. Satan sends them to church. Somebody getting blessed. Are you getting blessed at all? So the Bible says in Proverbs 6 verse 26, a man is reduced. A man is reduced. A man is reduced to a piece of bread by the means of a prostitute. A man is able by means of a warish woman. A man is brought to a piece of bread. People have become nothing. Useless. Destiny destroyed. Voice silenced. Because of immorality. Most times it happens right in the church. Right in the church. Right in the church. There are brothers who come to you. I love the way you sing. I love the way you talk. You know, they will change the accent, you know. I just laugh. I just laugh. I just laugh. I love the way you do things, man. Babe, can we be friends? Oh, I couldn't sleep last night. Couldn't sleep last night because of you. I was just thinking about you. Just thinking, just thinking, just thinking, thinking. Just thinking about you. Excuse me, go and sink. <laughs> go and sink. Tell the person to sink. The person should sink. <laughs> Somebody say amen. All right, let me give you the last one before we pray. The last danger to avoid. Avoid the danger of competition. The danger of competition. I don't know what you have. I don't know what God has given to you. Please avoid the danger of competition. When it comes to kingdom matters, excuse me, those who compete are stupid, foolish people. Because it is not by power nor by might. It is not by intelligence. It is not by craftiness. It is not by skill. It is by the grace of God. It is by the spirit of God. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12 to 13. He says we compare not. He says for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not what? Answer me church. They are not what? They are not wise. So if someone is not wise, the person is what? It's foolish. Comparing yourself with yourself, with others, it's an act of foolishness. You can't go anywhere. Your originality will not come out. Your beauty won't come out. Can I say something to you? As I try to close. Whatever God has given to you in terms of nature, in terms of talent, in terms of whatever, even your outward appearance, don't compete with it. Don't try to be like anybody. Do you know that the whites want to be like us? And we are we go about buying cream and bleaching cream and trying to be like them. People of God, don't compare yourself with anybody. Comparing yourself with people, even in ministry, in gifts, we have been gifted differently. And everyone is gifted uniquely. And the gift is for us to compliment ourselves. I am standing here as a preacher. I need a singer's. I am standing here as a preacher. I need a teacher. I need prophetic people. I need people who will help do some things. The gift of administration. There are people who have that gift. Just be unique in your area. And avoid competition. Somebody say amen. amen. Like I said earlier. What everything you see on social media is not correct. May not be true. May not be true. May not be true. People borrow money to organize program in church. And then you see the, the podium, very fine altar, very fine every, everywhere decorated. They just borrowed money to organize it. Borrow money to help God. And then you, you, you saw such a thing on screen and then you are amazed. You want to do a program? Finance. 
Please, don't borrow money to organize concert. Don't borrow money. If it is God, he will provide. Somebody hearing me here? If it is God, he will provide. People borrow clothes to wear, make a show and return back the clothes to their owners. And then you are here killing yourself. You want to be like them. Young people will not allow their parents to rest. My mates, my mates, my friends, my colleagues, they say we should do this. Every one of us must do this. I don't, eh, eh. And then you, you put your mother, your father under pressure. Under pressure. They give you money for feeding. You spend this. Squander it. You can't squander it in church. Because you want to compete with people. The Lord delivers somebody here. Yeah. I said the Lord delivers somebody here. Yeah. So it is not everything you see. Now listen. As I conclude this. Borrowing to make a point is an abuse of the grace of God. It's an insult to God. Trying to be like someone else will end you up a photocopy. What has God given to you? What is your endowment? What is your gift? What about the adults? Please think about it. This woman here, this woman here, Miss Simoku, she preaches the gospel. And I know the way she operates. And there are many people like that with different gifts. Please, don't cause crisis in church. Use your gift to the glory of God. If your gift is not an addition, if it is a subtraction, think about it. God will hold you responsible. Let's be upstanding. Are you blessed? Did God speak to you? Say with me, say, Father. Now, I do know that you are, not, you are not familiar with this system of prayers, but try to, try to connect, all right? Say with me, say, Father. Now, I said on Wednesday that Jesus didn't teach people how to preach. He didn't teach his disciples how to, how to prophesy. He didn't teach them how to whatever. But he taught them how to pray. So when we say pray like this, we are teaching you how to pray. There are people who don't know how to do it. Even if you know it, add to it. <laughs> add. Add. Virtue. Add. Somebody say amen. Can I have you throw your two hands above your head? Say, Father, I am grateful for your word to me. Thank you for speaking to me. I receive your words with appreciation. Somebody establish that prayer now. Raise your voice and pray that prayer. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for speaking to me. I receive your Lord this morning with appreciation. To you be all the glory. 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 In the name of Jesus. Few more prayer points. There are people who are gifted, they are not aware. Can you pray and say, Father, please, let my gift show up. Let my gift manifest. Oh God, show me my gift. Let me identify what I am gifted to do. What you have given to me. Father, please show it to me. Unravel it to me. Reveal it to me. My assignment, oh God. I can't be roaming about without assignment. I can't be moving without assignment, oh God. Unravel it to me. Show it to me, Father. Open your mouth and pray the prayer, child of God. You need to know what God has brought you into this world to do. Oh God, reveal it to me. Show it to me, Father. Are you praying at all?
Lord, help me to use my gift for the advancement of the church and humanity. Pray that prayer. Father, help me to use my gift. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to utilize my gift appropriately. Help me, Father, to engage my gift the way I should. Help me to engage my gift. Help me to operate within, within the confines of my gift, oh God. Help me, Father, not to miss my assignment for you. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus, shut your eyes, everyone. Maybe you are a member. I don't know if everyone here is a member of this chapel. You are welcome. Shut your eyes. Can you pray with me? Say, Father. The instruction is shut your eyes. Say with me, say, Father, help me to be useful in this church. Let me be a plus and not a minus. Pray that prayer quickly. Let me be a plus. Many things to be done. Advancement. Soul winning spiritual maturity maybe your gift is just to counsel young people your gift is to pray for young people many things on ground to be done father please help me let me be useful maybe you are a student can you ask the lord father help me to be useful on campus let me be a vessel in your hand let me be a vessel, a vessel, a weapon, a practical instrument in your hands, oh God. Pray the prayer, oh God. I can't afford to waste my time. I can't afford to waste my destiny. I can't afford to waste my talent, my potential, my gift. Oh God, help me to be useful. Help me to be a blessing on campus. To be a blessing to this chapel. Oh God, help me to be a blessing. Oh God, help me to represent you. Somebody go ahead and tell me, say, Father, every obstacle, every obstacle hindering me standing on my way against my life, against my manifestation. Father, let that obstacle be removed right now. Open your mouth and pray the prayer. Father, every obstacle standing against my gifting, against my, my manifestation, against my, my, my talent, oh God, I pray, let that obstacle be removed. Every mountain, mounted by the devil, against my life against my usefulness father let the mountain melt right now if that is your prayer amplify your voice and pray increase the intensity of your prayer this morning father I can't be hindered. I can't be stopped. I can't be restricted. In the name of Jesus. Are you praying at all? Increase your voice. Increase your voice. Let heaven hear you. Let the heavens open upon somebody here. Let the heavens open upon you. name we have prayed while your eyes are closed one more time 
you can't understand the gifts of God in your life or what to do with your gifts and you can't be useful in this world you can't be a blessing to humanity you can't be a blessing to the church if you have no relationship with God that is where it all starts that's where it starts from that's where it starts from maybe there is someone in the house you know deep down within you you know your heart your relationship with God is dislocated. Something has tampered with your flow with Jehovah. Your flow with God will determine the speed of your manifestation and to determine your usefulness on earth. Or maybe you don't have a relationship with God at all. You know you are not born again. You are just a church person. There are people who sing powerfully. They are not born again. Please, I want to beg you. You are involved in in an act that you know does not glorify God. You are addicted to a particular lifestyle. And it has rubbish your voice. It has rubbish your voice. It is almost wasting your destiny. Can you put your hands upon your head wherever you are standing and just ask the Lord, Father, please get me out of this mess. Let your grace get me out of this mess. I can't continue in this anymore. Excuse me, you don't need to pretend about this. You don't need to be ashamed about this. God didn't bring you to this world to be just to be among the about 7 billion people on earth just just census no 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 for how long will you continue to to be a minus to the kingdom of god please put your hand upon your head and i pray with you can you pray with me say father while you are standing with your hands on your head say father have mercy on me i surrender to you the totality of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sake. Thank you for resurrecting for my salvation. I am grateful. I surrender to you today. Have your way in my life. Take away this addiction. Take away this illicit lifestyle take away all the vices around me correct my life oh god purify me lord thank you jesus for doing so i am grateful in jesus name i pray for you while your hands are on your head i pray for you father in the name of jesus john chapter 1 verse 12 as many as received him, unto them he gave the power to become the sons of God. I ask, oh God, give your people the power, the grace, the capacity. Let your spirit help them to be your children and to stand for you. Thank you, mighty God. To you be all the glory and all the honor. In the name of Jesus. Can you be bold enough to come, let me congratulate you before I sit down. Can you be bold enough? You just made it right with God now. Come, let me congratulate you before you go and sit down. Thank you. Church, put your hands together for Jesus. Congratulations, more grace. More grace. Please come quickly. Come. Hold on. Please come, just come. While I congratulate you, just take a walk this way. God bless you for a little bit of counseling. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please ensure you carry your things. Pick your books, your book, your Bible and your baggages and then meet them there. Congratulations. 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 Your life will never remain the same again. Congratulations. Congratulations. Come, sir. You have an assignment for the kingdom.
you have an assignment for the kingdom. I don't know which area of assignment, but you need to be more careful so you can fulfill that assignment. It's a special assignment. Go and pray about it. You are a member of this chapel, right? Not yet. Okay. Whatever it is, when you are done, it's either you find, just try to locate him and share exactly what God wants you to do. Everybody is not a pulpit minister. There are those who are silent laborers. They are winning souls for the kingdom. Think about it. God bless you. Congratulations. 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 I'm happy for you. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. Congratulations. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, sir. He's, he's making a confession. He said, that's how I do to you sometimes. You know, when you're invited somewhere, uh, sometimes, you know. But you know, today is a special program. And they pack, we need a whole package. There's some messages you can't stop halfway. And because of the pressure of what God wants to do. Thank you so much for being a blessing. Please, will you want to pray for God's servant? Stretch your hands. Bless. He's a thorough blessing. I can tell you, we cannot recover from this day. We cannot. The Lord has packaged and released everything in his heart for us for this day. We're grateful. When God loves a man, he opens his heart to him. Can you bless God's servant? He's doing so much work, so much labor. They've opened another branch. The Lord is expanding the work in his hands. Several young people around him. Pray the Lord will strengthen him. The Lord will, 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 will enlarge this work in his hands. He has used his gifts to be a blessing to us. That his gifts will continue to be